So we test all those 30 different techniques when we bleed into a city and, and get to everything first. And here's what I found out. Tweaking tax del my tax delinquent approach over a hundred times over a six, seven year period. Um, Cause we tweak every, everything I just mentioned, we, we tweak our approach and we just don't, you know, go with a flagship technique and just do it and pretend it's gospel. Right. Right. We test it. So what I found out is that as we, as we kept testing over and over and over our, our different approaches inside the delinquent tax sandbox that we started, we started really just destroying our competition um, with the techniques and stuff that we settled in on. What's up, everybody? Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. Listen, we have a very special guest on the line today. Uh, somebody that you know, I recently met through another friend of ours. We have uh, mutual friends. And um, I just heard about everything that he's doing in his real estate business. Absolutely crushing it. He's I don't know how much I can talk about as far as how much he's had uh, as far as involvement in the real estate industry and some of the products that you guys have probably seen, some of the software out there you guys have definitely seen. Um, he's been the forerunner in, in some of these things. And uh, a lot of the, the uh, sequences you guys see out there, marketing sequences and, and funnels and things like that, he has had a hand in. Uh, specifically through hedge funds as far as doing, uh, you know, having an involvement in 34,000. And this number is absolutely crazy. Um, I haven't heard of anybody doing or having an involvement in 34,000 transactions in real estate. And uh, through the sequences and, and the funnels he's building, the, the marketing channels he's building for hedge funds, he's, uh, he's had that type of impact on his industry. 34 thousand deals that is a lot of deals man so <laughs> i wanted to welcome my friend jason polliser to the call what's up man hey how you doing you'd think my hair would be completely white with that many transactions under my belt that is i'm <laughs> bro i've been doing this for close to 20 years and i'm nowhere near thirty-four thousand transactions that is crazy so um yeah i mean how how, how is this even possible man um, so, so yeah, uh, you know, just a little bit on that is, um, trust me, I'm not, uh, I'm not Spider-Man. I'm not swinging all the, you know, slinging the webs myself and capturing everything. Um, I build off market acquisition, um, engines we call, um, two day blueprints, right? I, I, in two days, I build a blueprint to attack a city 30 different ways and not the same five or six ways that most Facebook gurus will, will teach you to do. Right. So we enter a city 30 ways, right? And, um, and so I train hedge fund teams of 15, 20 people to run some of these different funnels. And then, uh, you know, they hire me to average 20, 30, 40 homes a month for an extended amount of time. So that's, I always tell everybody that's real pressure. And yeah. um, so out of those 30 techniques, tax delinquents, my favorite, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit, but um, quite honestly, when you, when you put together an off market funnel, 30 different ways, to get to everything first, uh, the game slows down a little bit. And, and to expand on that just a tiny bit, I get paid, okay? So if you're listening to this, I get paid uh, by these hedge funds a good amount of money to build it. But then the fun part for me, Jamel, is that they give me big budgets. I'm in control. So I tell these five people on the team, you're gonna do these five, six things. I tell these five, six over here to do this, this, and this. And they run those funnels. I use their big budgets and I collect all of the data so I know what wins. So almost anybody who's listening right now, almost any conceivable marketing um, document piece, technique, whatever you want to say that you've ever seen in your God given life, it's already been run through me and I've tested it in well over a hundred cities and I go, Oh, this one's not winning. I'm going to throw that one aside. This one that we didn't think was going to work is winning and we're going to keep doing that. So, um, Certainly don't, don't do all those transactions myself. I just train these teams and uh, these, these companies with big teams. And then they go out and just destroy the marketplace based upon the techniques that we've tested over 138 cities. But it all starts with you, man. That's the beautiful part of this whole thing, man. So why don't, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? How, how did you even get started doing this, man? Okay, so uh, in my infancy, my little baby, um, I... Uh, 
I started out on the specialty investment funding side. So I was an investment banker. I was um, top 70 mortgage um, bankers in the nation, broker, uh, closing 40, 50 loans a month. But I specifically worked with real estate investors. I knew every freaking investment program that there was. So what happened was, is that I guess there was a calling all cars across the nation uh, by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And they said, hey, we need the we need the absolute investment funding specialist um, for our company because we're teaching people how to do deals, but a lot of them are having problems getting funding. So they narrowed it from 70 something down to three and chose me. And I started teaching it at uh, their workshops across the nation. I'm like, hey, look, you're gonna get stuck at this number of deals. Here's why, do this, do that. And now we can quadruple your capacity, right? And um, so I did that for a couple of years and then so, so what, what, what did happened? You like was, a, what did you have like a knack for that or something like that, or did, like did it come naturally? Um, I I'm one of the few that actually did what I went to college for, which is crazy, right? Um, <laughs> so I, I got a degree in finance, one class away from my minor in economics. I like numbers, and um, so banking was natural for me. But um, what I figured out though is that banking's just a commodity, right? Jamel, you could be a banker. I could be a banker. If you had better rates that day, they're going to go to you, Jamel, right? right. So I had, so I quickly realized in the investment fi financing space that not all banks are created equal. So what I did was I literally, like in the movie, A Beautiful Mind, where they open up the shed at the end. He's got all these pieces of paper. His, his mind's splattered all over the shed. I had every conceivable, um, every conceivable bank program in America with investment. So if you came to me and said, Hey, my credit score is this, I'm doing this. It's a multifamily, single family. This one's cash out. I knew where to place it. And so, uh, all of a sudden people, ca people started coming to me saying, Hey, I'm stuck. And then I get them unstuck. And so that's where, that's where, uh, my, I guess my niche was. And, uh, so then after that, Kiyosaki's team's like, Hey, um, everybody likes what you're doing for them but we also heard that you're a marketing specialist because I started investing myself. So where I transitioned for the last 20, almost 23 years now is I still do investment funding through somebody on my team, but I want to become an investor because Jamel, you know, this is easy math for both you and I, I was walking away doing, doing a loan for you, Jamel. And you're like, Hey, thanks Jason. And I walk out of there doing an investment loan, make it two grand. And you walk out with 40 grand. I'm like, no, this doesn't, feel, <laughs> this doesn't feel equitable. Yeah. So I started investing myself and then started pouring my marketing expertise and I started testing everything. And so Kiyosaki and them came back and said, Hey, we know you're a marketing specialist. It seems like you're getting everything first in the cities that you're in. Um, can you create a class? And uh, statistically it became their highest rated class. So I basically built a class called marketing today, showing investors how to get to, how to get the properties first no matter if your market's saturated or, or you're in a less saturated market. And then, as you know, um, built REI Black Book, real estate automation software. So some of you listening, built that software over an eight, nine year period, then I sold it, and, um, and then here we are. So speaking for all the TV shows, doing it for Kiyosaki, and then hedge funds started coming saying, hey, we heard you get to everything first, we need to average 30 homes a month. Once you do it for one, they just refer you to another and another. Like uh, one of my friends, Joe Pagano, helped him um, put some of the systems in place and marketing stuff to do 9,000 homes in six that, years. That is crazy, man. So, you know, just keeping all of this in mind, you know, I know you mentioned you have 30 different marketing channels and tax delinquent being one of your favorite. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that. How did you make that transition into the tax delinquent world? Okay, so um, it's pretty simple. Data, I always teach, data doesn't lie, right? So data doesn't lie, it tells the truth. Numbers and don't lie. Click, uh, yeah, correct. So I collect all the data back on all the different marketing techniques and strategies. Um, everything under the sun from probate to attacking FISBOs, delinquent tax, pre-foreclosure, um, assisted living facilities. Right. Right? If people move in there, they got to sell a house. Every conceivable um, fire and water damage, which people, if you're listening right now, um, there's apps out there like Pulse Point Respond. Here's a little tip for everybody. Pulse Point Respond. You sign up for your area, and every time a home has water damage or fire damage, 
you're notified. Hmm, I wonder if they might be motivated, right? So we test all those 30 different techniques when we bleed into a city and, and get to everything first. And here's what I found out. Tweaking tax del my tax delinquent approach over a hundred times over a six, seven year period. Um, Cause we tweak every, everything I just mentioned, we, we tweak our approach and we just don't, you know, go with a flagship technique and just do it and pretend it's gospel. Right. Right. We test it. So what I found out is that as we, as we kept testing over and over and over our, our different approaches inside the delinquent tax sandbox that we started, we started really just destroying our competition um, with the techniques and stuff that we settled in on. And um, so out of 30 techniques that we build when we do a two day blueprint, our tax delinquent blueprint alone out of those 30 can make any investor that's listening right now, whatever income benchmark you want to hit set for yourself, 200 grand, 300 grand. We can hit that just in that sandbox alone. It's my favorite niche of all time. Yeah. I got it. I got to say, man, I, I've gone through that tax delinquent blueprint myself, man. Um, and it is insane. It's insane. It's I've massive. never seen, never seen anything like it. I have to say. Um, so I, I kind of want to dig into that a little bit today as yeah. well. Because uh, I, I want to give people some pointers on how they can get started, uh, at least get their feet wet doing it, and then um, get out there and just start crushing it, man. But um, so, so you ended up doing tax delinquents. We, we talked about that a little bit. Most people look at tax delinquents and they say to themselves, look, you know, there's, how do I figure this out? You know, there, you know, how do I even get started doing this? You know, what, what advice... How did you like? What what advice would you give to that type of person that's just getting started doing this? Okay, so let's. Um, I think the best policy would be to, again, because I'm a data guy, right? And um, these teams go do what I tell them. I collect all the data on it and I start to fine tune it. Well, what I found in tax delinquent is this, and I, and and before I pull back the curtain and, and give you some step by steps, if you're listening right now or watching this or whatever, however it's going to be delivered to you. Um, I want to start by laying the foundation of why, if you understand why everyone that listens to this, if you understand why, then it's, it's one step short of criminal not to attack this niche because it, because it's the best of all time. And here's why. So I'll tell you why. And then I'll give you a couple tips here on things that you can do to get started. Here's why Jim Allen, I know, you know, but as you're listening, folks, and by the way, I'm teaching you right now for my RV. It's my favorite place to work because nobody can bother me. And um, love it. And uh, so I love it. And uh, so I work here four days a week. It's great. Um, here's why. Folks, listen to me intently. Do you know what kind of homes start marching towards tax sale? I do. The ones that are marching towards that severely behind, okay? Here's what kind of houses. Free and clear ones. Okay, here's why. If it was Jason and Jamel Bank, or you know what? Jamel looks sharper than me today. It's Jamel and Jason Bank. And uh, and we have a $300,000 loan on a property. And we know that it's tax delinquent. And every single state in America puts laws in place because the states want their money. Right, Jamel? So um, they, every one of them put laws in place to say, if you're behind X, Y, Z, we have the right to take this house because they're going to get their money. So if that's the truth, which it is, then Jamel and Jason Bank, when we find out we have a, a customer that's behind on their taxes, we're going to foreclose because it's in our paperwork that says if, if you don't have insurance, we can put it on you. If you're still chronically behind missing payments or missing taxes, not paying your taxes, then we have the right to take the house because J Jamel and Jason Bank, we're not going to lose a $300,000 loan. So we're going to foreclose on that property. So guess what? When you start attacking this niche and attack the ones that are severely behind, here's what I know with the highest degree of certainty. Out of anything that you could ever do, high equity absentee owner list, vacant list, COVID, water disconnects, fire damage, probate, out of all, any niche, these ones I know with a high degree of certainty are typically free and clear of big mortgages. Now, they might have some fines and some delinquent tax, but by and large, uh, the banks would have already foreclosed on them. So the ones that are staring you in the face, Think about this. If they're free and clear, no matter how much work the house needs or what the situation is, Jamel, we could we could deploy almost any real estate exit strategy we want because there's so much room to make money on deals. So why should this be one of your favorite niches of all time? It's simply 
this. They're the biggest spreads. When you become a solution for a homeowner in this niche, it's the biggest income spread, period. Make and, sense? Yeah, definitely, man. And, and I, and I got to say, going through the program, you're not positioning yourself as – you're not positioning yourself like everybody else, basically. You're, you're no. positioning yourself as a solution to a problem. I mean, the marketing – I've like I said, man, I've never seen anything like it. It is insane. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, and, and I'm being honest. I'm being 100% transparent right now. It's insane. I, the, the, the marketing approach that you take, there's no reason for someone not to want to call you. It's crazy. Yeah. Never seen anything. Yeah. But yeah, that, I, go ahead. I was going to say, go with ahead. that said, what are some of the obstacles that people might face getting started in this, uh, yeah. this particular niche? Okay, and so so here's what most of you are used to, okay? And um, and I know as you're listening, I'm like, damn it, he's right. Uh, 138 cities over six, seven-year period. So, I mean, beat my head against the wall month after month after month times six, seven years, okay? Uh, here's what I know. Testing all these different techniques to get a homeowner to understand what you might be a solution. Here's what most people do, and here's the barrier of entry, which works to your advantage if you have a real blueprint like our tax delinquent blueprint, right? Uh, here's what most people do. When somebody's about to lose their house to tax sale, here's what 99% of all investors do. They send out marketing that says, and you know what I'm gonna, Jamel, you know what I'm gonna say. They send out marketing that says this. Hey, uh, before you lose your house to tax sale, let me put some cash in your pocket. They have a hundred of those. You know why our acquisitions teams across the nation that go on those appointments in this niche, they're like, yeah, look at, I got 15 postcards here saying the same, right? Saying the same old stuff. And um, so, so we already know when we go on these appointments, there, there's everybody's marketing. Everybody just throwing money, caution to the wind and just throwing money away on their marketing budget, trying to be consistent. And that's all they do. Drives me crazy, right? So when everybody else is doing it, that, that, here's how those phone calls go. Hey, yeah, you're one of 15. I just decided to call you. So now you now it's the luck of the draw with your marketing effort, which sucks, right? Nobody likes to, oh, yeah, you're one of 15. I just decided to call yours. And um, go ahead and make me your cash offer just like everybody else did. That's the nature of the phone call. That, that So that's that's the uphill climb that you have if you do it um, like, everybody, like everybody's been taught to do um, in Facebook and YouTube land, right? testing it out over six, seven year period in hundred plus cities, there's a different way to do it. So what we did, which again, you went through it. And before we even came on today, you're like, dude, the stuff, <laughs> the stuff that you guys, it's, it's not even fair. So we position ourselves. We spent, think about this. Once we zeroed in on the marketing pieces that were winning, then we dove deep on, on the backside, which is creating a whole program around that technique that went, it shifts their brain. So what we do is we come from a tax assistance approach. And a lot of people, here, here's what, here's what um, you know, uh, I've had a few people, including yourself, Jamel, say, hey, share a little bit of tips about it. I've had people try and run with it and then fall on their face. Here's why. Then they say, hey, we want to give you tax assistance, and then they don't know what to do next. So what we did is we built all around that a full-blown program, approval, denial for, for tax assistance. And... Um, tax education behind it they they have to go through and answer some questions and we give them different options and it is not centered around buying their house so jamel here's the fun part you know what kind of phone calls we get hey i'm calling you about tax assistance code tac 424001 yeah okay yeah so i'd like to see if you could assist me somehow sounds good so we're going to ask you about your financial position a little bit about the house and again what we built out on the back end which took us about the better part of three quarters of a year of fine tuning over thousands of phone calls and Q and a back and forth with homeowners. We've zeroed in on how to get their attention, how to do it the right way, how to offer them multiple options that does not start with ever talking about buying their house and give them real options that they could use potentially to help out their situation. And here's what I know when we get those phone calls. When they call us, they're calling us asking about a tax assistance code. And then we, we walk them through a full-blown Q&A. We tell them, give us 48 hours. We're going to evaluate everything. We're going to come back and give you several options. And what happens is all of a sudden you're like, hey, 
give me everything that you can to give me some assistance on this particular property. And, and so what happens is when they call you, they're open to answering any question you have. They spill their freaking guts. They, Beck, hey, tell me about your financial situation. Here, here's what it is. Tell me about the house. It doesn't need work. Yes, it needs four windows, three ceiling fans, two light covers, one shrub is burnt out on the, on the left side of the house. They want to know how you could truly help them, right? You could say, what's my favorite color? They'll go purple. They'll tell you everything under the sun to win this game. And um, so the approach is light years ahead of what everybody else does. We have a full-blown full approval denial system process that, that homeowners can follow. And what happens is this. We help them come to the decision that based upon their situation, based upon their financial situation, their house, um, uh, other extraneous circumstances going on, they, they come to their own conclusion that maybe I do need to sell this property. And when we came to them being, being the most helpful, we win the game. So, so let's talk about providing our listeners with a simple, let's say, three to five step process to get started doing this. So if we're, if we're thinking about someone who's brand new to this, even if they're a, a, a veteran real estate investor at the moment, what are, what, are, what are some of the steps that they need to take in order to get started doing this? Because like, like you said, man, if someone's contacting you, they received a, uh, uh, you know, a mailer from you with a code on it. I want to know what this offer is about personally. Um, but the way that you systemize this, I'm not like from, from my experience, and I'm speaking from experience, by the way, when people call me there, it's not like your normal motivated seller phone call. You know, it's almost like they want, they want an offer. They want to see what this, this is about, but their approach to it is, it's not like saying, Hey, you know, um, what, what, what's this all about? I want to find out more information. So it's almost like they're contacting me or contacting you, for example, for this information. They have a lot of questions, right? Um, yeah, versus, correct. versus when someone contacts me through a regular mailer, they're not as nice as they are <laughs> when they get this piece of mail, you know yeah. what I mean? So let's, let's yeah. provide our listeners with, with that, uh, three to, three to five step process on how they can get started. Because to me, sure. psychologically, the way you market to these people, it, it affects them in a way that makes them want to call to find out more information. Oh yeah. And, and they, and they, they freely say on the phone too. It's amazing. Um, our team, our teams love it. Uh, we're doing it across America that they're, they're like, dude, it, it took them from hating to be on the phone to, liking those incoming phone calls because people are ready to talk to you about their situation um because you have a full-blown assistance program right so if you're gonna get started here's what we need you to do okay before you dip your toes in this sandbox the most profitable one free and clear houses a lot of the time um like i said it should be it should be one of your biggest focuses and um the people that we get our hands on the investors that we help uh they're like dude it's my new favorite niche um i was just talking to you before we started about a guy that i had never met before um, that, that was in Atlanta and, um, I met him at a, a real estate event and he said, dude, it's my favorite niche of all time now. So what do we do? Right. First thing you need to do is find out how far behind does a homeowner need to be two years, three years, four years in taxes in your state before they get slated for tax sale. That's one. Okay. Step two, find out when, when the tax sales are held. So like in Texas, they're held every month in uh, St. Louis, my original hometown, they're held every August once you're three years behind. You want to know how far behind because then that's going to tell you how to pare down the delinquent tax list because here's the other fun part. Most of the time in every state, because states want their money, right? You can get a list of tax delinquents. But if you grab that list, Jamel, um, as you already know, there could be 14,000. So I always laugh when people say they have a lead generation problem. Uh, you have 14,000 delinquent tax. There's no lead generation problem. And um, so what we need to do is find out how far behind because – then you can pare down the list. One of the biggest keys here is to pare down that tax delinquent list. And inside our tax delinquent blueprint that we created, which uh, the course that you went through, right? Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we show you how to get very, very, very specific with that list. So that you don't, you don't have to have some big budget. You can narrow down a list from thousands down to a few hundred that, that are the absolute most motivated and just market to them with the superior marketing technique. 
that wins the game. So you don't have to go, you don't have to be consistent and mail 50 times, right? So having said that, once you find out how far behind before somebody goes to tax sale, now you can start to pare down that list. And so if it's three years behind in my example of St. Louis, right? Then we probably want to start with the people that are two years behind or more because they're marching towards tax sale. I always joke and say, hey, always pare down your list. If they're one year behind, Jamel, it could be an accident. Most of the time it's not, but it could be. Two years behind in the history of mankind has never been an accident. And I'm um, so having said that, now we're paring down our list. The next thing you need to do is get, is get your um, get your marketing letters ready to go, um, which we've perfected. We've we have a hundred different variations that we tested, and and the two pieces that we deploy that are inside our tax delinquent blueprint that you've seen, um, they destroy the universe. Like we're getting we're yeah. getting um, direct mail response rates of. 10, 15, 20. We had one client and I'll say his name so you can look him up folks. Scott Jordan. Okay. He's out of St. Louis. You can look him up. He had a, he narrowed down his list. He got very specific with it based upon what we taught him inside the tax Lincoln blueprint. So it's a very, very, very niche list, the zip codes that he wanted. And he got a 40.5% response rate in five weeks. It's That's insane, is, man. That's, that's insane. Of. Yeah. I, I had another guy um, that, came to our full two-day blueprint after getting the tax delinquent blueprint. And um, his name was Phil Hutchins. Again, I'm, I say name so people can look it up on their own. Phil Hutchins, he came to our blueprint. Well, he was already six weeks into the tax delinquent blueprint. And by the time he showed up at the blueprint and inside the two-day blueprint, I taught the tax technique as well. And um, the rest of the class, I go, hey, Phil, what are you, what are you at response rate-wise? And he was like five weeks in into sending out his mailers. He was already at a 19% response rate. When people send out direct mail and get a one or, if they get a 2% response rate, they get excited. This isn't a fair fight. No. So after we narrow down our list, we get ready to send out the marketing pieces, the two that we know win by a mile. Then you just go straight into the scripting that took us probably three years to perfect the scripting and the different help buckets that we teach. So there's different buckets that you put homeowners in because when they're calling to ask, for help on a full-blown assistance program, you better have structured stuff in place. So the, so the final piece is that you take nice phone calls instead of going, you're just one of those flippers. You take, you take phone calls that are easy to take because they're eager to talk to you, which is um, light years out of the competition within itself and 10 times better than what most investors have to experience daily, right? But you better know what you're talking about. So all you do on the back end is follow the script and we put them in different help buckets it's, and we close deal after deal after deal. Whatever, in, if you're listening to this, whatever income benchmark you set for yourself, you can do it in this sandbox alone. I know with certainty because I don't, I don't guess my way through stuff. When a hedge fund says I need 2,000 homes, I can't fake it till I make it. But like they have, they can lose 3% of that portfolio value if they don't hit their 20, 30 homes a month and, and hit their number on the date that they're supposed to get done. They could lose a lot of money. They still make a lot of money, but they could lose a lot of money. So I can't afford to, to guess my way through this stuff. That's right. So when you get these properties, obviously, you know, they're a dime a dozen when, when you follow the steps, right? So when you get yeah. these properties, are you, whole, are, are you wholesaling them over to hedge funds or are you wholesaling them over? Oh, yeah. To no. Well, when I, okay, yeah. So when I, when, the whole game, and that's the whole reason we built out blueprints and people started hiring us for them is that the whole game is to get there first, right? Now, on the back end, uh, when I build it for a hedge fund, they deploy the blueprints that we build out in tax delinquent blueprints, their favorite of all, right? And they grab all the deals with their acquisitions teams and they close them themselves. So I don't, they don't come to me and then I wholesale them. I'm in charge of the marketing deployment. I'm in charge of teaching negotiations for their sales teams. But um, those flow directly into their pipeline um, to be fixed up and built in a rental portfolio. Personally, 80% of the deals that come come across my desk, uh, I wholesale 10%, I fix and flip. And then the final 10%, myself and my wife, and my wife runs this, we do Airbnbs. Nice. And um, so our clients, um, they do everything under the sun. They do owner financing, they do lease options. It's all about getting there first, right? And having the real relationship with them. So we've perfected that in this niche. So out of the 30 different things that we do when we do a regular two day blueprint for investment companies, and the tax delinquent blueprint, it's, it's, it's out of 30, it's my favorite of all time. Biggest spreads, 
some of the highest levels of motivation. We have, um, we have a perfected system that, that has them come to us wanting to talk to us instead of just being one of 15 that's the luck of the draw. And here's the fun part. I don't have to send out to the list over and over and over and over and over and be consistent over and over and over because it works so freaking well. Our response rate's nasty. That, um, it's we, ridiculous. We, we create the relationship right out of the gate. Yeah. So, so imagine a world where you don't have to take a big list. You get a, a skinny down list like we teach you. Oh, and then the response rate is so damn good that you don't have to, oh, I guess I was told to be consistent on 18,000 different podcasts. So that's what I got to do. Right. Um, we're, we're on this podcast. I'm, I'm teaching you different. That's what Jamel, that's why you wanted to have me on. So folks, there's a, there's a better world to live in that produces result, results that um, you deserve and that you want if you do it the right way. And folks, I didn't do, and, and to let you know that I'm a human being, right? Because sometimes like, damn, he's a machine. I'm a human being, meaning this. I tried 100 different variations to find out what works well. Then after that, I went to real work and developed the back end. How do we put them in different buckets and show them different ways that we can help them that no investor will ever speak to them about? That took a long time, right? So I, I, I had to go to work too. I didn't just wake up and go, this is how it'll be done, right? Um, it took a long time, but uh, there's no reason that you can't take over your market and bypass every investor in town and, um, and help homeowners while doing it. Man, I, I'm, I gotta, you know, I gotta speak for it myself, man. It's definitely a fantastic program. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I know you guys are gonna be interested in it. I'm gonna link it in the, the description box of this uh, on my YouTube page. If if you're on the YouTube page, go to the description box. I'm gonna link uh, a training that uh, Jason and I uh, did a little while back. Yep. You guys can check it out, and you can make the decision on your own. But I'm telling you, I've gone through this myself. It is absolutely probably the best approach to real estate investing I've seen in a long time. And I've been doing this for a long time, personally. It's no secret. It's my favorite of all time. And uh, investor after investor, city over city, when we get our hands on them, uh, almost every single time they come back and say, hey, okay, you're right, dude. This is my new favorite niche. Yeah. By far. <laughs> By far. Yeah, man. So, so Jason, you know, our listeners, I'm sure they want to get in contact with you somehow. What's the best way for them to, to, to reach out to you, maybe on social media or something like that? Yeah, you can just reach out to me on social media, Jason Palliser, P-A-L-L-I-S-E-R. Shoot me a message, um, friend requests me, whatever. Um, you, can, uh, you can email me, jason at go see jason.com. So, Jason, like you're going to see a movie, jason at go see jason.com. And, um, and, uh, to show you that, uh, I don't play games. If you want to shoot me a text message, 314-749-3737 and, uh, just ask me whatever you want. Um, uh, here to help you, but, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna get you more sellers that are ready to roll than, than any niche. Uh, yeah, I'll stack it against any niche, uh, across America. Anybody that wants to, I always say, I'll, I'll go Facebook live and we'll, we'll have a contest and that this niche will win by far. I mean, I, for sure. And, and I've seen evidence of this over the last few months uh, that I've been implementing it myself as well. Um, last, last but not least, I know you're yeah. a book reader. I know you mentioned Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, you, you've probably gone through some of his stuff. Are you going through any books right now or what, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. My, yeah. So I'm rereading one of my favorite books. I, I teach negotiations. Um, I train acquisitions teams, right? So uh, one of my favorite books of all time is uh, Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference. I actually have that book in my Audible. I haven't gone through it yet, though. I, I'm like lined up. I got so many books. I'm like six books away from that <laughs> one. I have to get to it, man. Um, so I'll, I'll link that in the description box as well. All the books and everything, everything that we talked about is going to be linked in the show notes of this uh, podcast. So definitely uh, check out those links uh, below. And I'm going to link the training that I, that I did with uh, – with Jason as well. So you guys can check that out and, and make that decision for yourself. And what advice would you give to our, to our listeners? That's what final advice would you give to our listeners? That's on the fence right now. Um, in the tax delinquent space, um, uh, for yourself, uh, folks, think about this. Just, just find out how many people are behind on taxes in your area and whatever counties you want to attack. And when you see how many there are, 
then I just need I just need for you to understand if put yourself put yourself in the bank shoes if you're a bank with a loan and you're about to lose that loan because tax sales jump in front of a first mortgage which means you're wiped out right you would never you would foreclose so the ones that are severely behind you're attacking a niche that a lot of times these people are free and clear of mortgages on their houses so all I would tell you advice wise is if you can attack a marketplace 30 different techniques wide 30 different investment sandboxes to find homeowners that might want to sell to you where you can be a solution to make money which is why you're here why you're listening why would you not like why would you not um, explore on your own and find out that wow this niche you're right has the biggest equity um, positions of, of anyone that I could market to why would you not do that like so I would just tell everybody to um, to look into that see it, that there's thousands behind you have a plethora of leads and if you and if you have the right approach you're gonna win this game and so my advice is just find out how many behind there are find out how how many years behind before they go to tax sale and you've already done a little bit of the work up front before we pull the curtain back on a tax delinquent blueprint for you and um, like our, our average just just you know our average wholesale deal last year in the tax delinquent niche out of our 30 niches um, our average last year uh, just wholesale wise was 23.8 but in the tax delinquent in the tax delinquent niche okay sandbox it was 34 mm. so folks think about that I, and I'm just wholesaling if we kept them and flipped them we could make 50 60 70 80 90 100 grand right so if you're keeping it for a po don't you want to keep a house that has massive equity so what I would tell everybody is that pick pick the niche that you want to be in strategically I just like to pick the one that has the biggest spreads and doesn't have a bunch of mortgages on it. I mean, it, to me, it just makes financial sense. I mean, and then you think about that. I mean, you're dealing with uh, less competition. Most people don't know about what you're doing. You're dealing with more profits and you're dealing with easier conversations with motivated sellers who doesn't want to do this. So definitely look oh, into yeah. this guys. You know, yeah. it's, it's, if you're, if you're anybody here, if you've ever made a freaking look into it, okay? If, you, if this has ever been you, if you've ever made one freaking phone call or, or had a seller call you off of your marketing and say, oh yeah, just make your offer. You're just one of those damn flippers, blah, blah, blah. And they're just, or they're just like, yeah, let me guess. I, I'm not really wanting to sell, blah, blah, blah. And all that I just said, if you've had any of that, then you at least need to look into it because the way we approach it, they call us saying, hey, I want to talk to you. Yeah, tell me more about your program. Here's a tax assistance code. And it's, it'll be a dream come true. Yeah, the conversations are, I mean, they, they literally want to be on the phone with you to figure out how, how you can help them. So that's, uh, it's, it, it, I'm telling you, it's different than anything you've ever seen. You guys definitely need to check it out. I'll link the, uh, the training, the further training in the uh, description box. All right. But, but Jason, man, it's been a real pleasure. I appreciate you coming out today on the show and, uh, and, and uh, helping our listeners to understand what goes on in the world of tax delinquents, man. Hey, sounds good. Happy to have you. And folks, get after it. Yeah, man. Looking forward to having you again. And I'm going to talk to you guys on the next one. Take care.